in this video my tea journey from tea bags drinker to where I am today. Hi guys, this is Gabriele from Nanoshan and we have just reached 1000 subscribers. Thousands of you have subscribed our YouTube channel and I would like to thank you very much for that. You know, it has been just a year since I started doing this video. At the very beginning, I had really no plan. I just said, let's get started. And then more of you and more of you subscribe our channel and this motivated me to put out videos every week, something that I'm still doing today and I plan to do for the future. So thanks a lot. It has been a great support and please go ahead, tell me which type of video would you like to watch and I will do my best to uh, put them out for you. And you know, for those of you that actually have been watching these videos for months or maybe for the whole year, you might have asked yourself uh, where Gabriele took all his tea knowledge, where does it come from, which is Gabriele's uh, tea history. And some of you have even asked for videos about that and I thought let's wait reaching 1000 subscribers and then I will make a video, this one, about my tea journey, the tea history of me. So it will be probably a relatively long video, you know how long because you can read it uh, how long the video is, I don't know, but just, you know, for, re uh, for watching I would just suggest take a cup of tea, make your gongfu cha, relax and if you're interested about uh, yeah, knowing my tea history just uh, let's, let's get started with that. And you know, my first memories of um, tea as a ritual, I would say, are back in the 90s when I was going to high school. Now you have to know that uh, when I was a child I was really not uh, uh, good at school, I had other interests in mind, but when I was a teenager I realized um, that I had a dream actually. I started having a dream. I wanted to become an astronomer and I knew that to become an astronomer I have to go to university and it's better I thought if I get and start studying. So the high school years were really hard uh, days for me because I had to catch up and make up for everything I didn't do in my childhood and um, every afternoon I was spending uh, my hours in my room focusing on my... Um, I remember still that I had uh, a, a table with uh, um, a glass tabletop and um, I was just spending there all my, all my afternoons and uh, every afternoon, almost every afternoon at about 4 o'clock my mom was coming, was coming with a tray, I still remember it was a metal tray, we had two of them, red or yellow, and she was bringing upstairs a tea. It was tea in tea bags and usually it was uh, either uh, black tea or it was uh, a fruity tea and she was always putting sugar in it. Sometimes she would even bring the whole um, uh, thermos with hot water for me for doing some refilling. And this is how actually I knew tea at that time. I didn't really was into tea, but it just happened that very often I was drinking tea because it was a kind of common uh, in, uh, in my house. And then uh, what happens? It happened that uh, eventually I went to university, but I didn't study astronomy, I actually went for engineering. And all those years, in the high school and beginning of university, tea was not really my hobby, not at all. I had other things in my mind. My main hobby was uh, sport. I was doing uh, judo. I did judo for uh, half of my life, at that time for all my life actually, and I was very much into it. As a matter of fact, um, in uh, 2002, and I will start um, doing tea right now because I, will, I know I will speak a lot in this video. I need something good. And um, so in, uh, in 2002, I went uh, in Germany for Erasmus. For those of you that don't know what is Erasmus, Erasmus is the uh, European um, Student Exchange Program. So um, I just picked up Germany and I spent the whole year, even more than that, in Stuttgart, in South Germany. And that year changed uh, a lot of things. If it wasn't for my Erasmus time, I wouldn't have this interest in tea, I'm sure. And probably even today, I still would be there just drinking tea bags. And um, 
Well, you know, it's, uh, it's not that in Erasmus I really developed a passion for tea, but what happened is that I really uh, broadened my uh, views. I met uh, people from many different countries and um, it's just, you know, I, I went to Erasmus as an Italian and uh, when I came back, I was more an inhabitant of the world. I was open to different culture. Um, I start uh, having the urge of traveling much more than before. And for me, actually, um, there was uh, uh, Andersen, which uh, was uh, a, a Danish writer. He once wrote, to travel is to live. And for me, that was it. I mean, traveling, knowing new things, and uh, um, it was my life. I wanted my life to be like that. And so I, um, I went then back in Italy the year later in 2003 without knowing that actually I will stay in Italy just for one year and it will be the last time so far that I have been lived in, uh, uh, in Italy. In fact, uh, in 2004 I left. I left for Berlin. And in Berlin I went there for writing my master thesis. It was a great time. I moved there because I was supposed to be there just for six months and I ended up being there for more than six years and even getting the German citizenship. You never know what happens in life. As a matter of fact, uh, um, the first Christmas, I remember the first Christmas after I moved to Germany, I was coming back to Italy to visit my family and I was so enthusiastic about the new teas that I have discovered in Berlin that I took uh, um, present for the whole family and I took just tea back. So there was just a grocery store, it's not a grocery, it was like a drugstore, uh, Rossmann, for those of you that are in Germany and know it, that at that time, maybe even today, had a tea corner. And in this tea corner, there were a lot of pouches of loose leaf tea. Loose leaf tea that I didn't know before because I was just drinking tea back, it was something new for me. You know, it was um, tea mixed with uh, any possible uh, flowers and uh, spices and fruits. Uh, uh, I remember something like orange maracuya, I mean things that uh, um, I, I would never even think about drinking today. But uh, I just was super excited and for me it was really a new way of drinking tea, a new level of tea. So I had a certain interest in that but it's certainly not the tea that I'm drinking today. Anyway, what happens then? It happens then uh, that in uh, 2005, while I was still in Berlin, I mm, went to Japan. I went to Japan with the European Space Agency that, uh, um, I don't remember exactly how it happened, but uh, basically it was a student program and together with other 80 students, uh, we got the travel paid to uh, Fukuoka in Japan where there was the uh, International Astronautical Congress on that year and we could, as student, prepare, present our paper. So when I went to Japan, I remember very clearly, uh, besides, of course, participating to the Congress, I had two things that I wanted to do in Japan. One thing, I wanted to do Judo in a Judo school. You might know that in Japan there are schools where uh, students study but also do uh, judo every morning and every afternoon judo is the national sport of japan i really wanted to do uh, judo in uh, such a club and then just the training you know and then i wanted to buy property already at that time i know the tea in japan is particularly good and in fact i brought back home two cans of ten of tea from japan one was a sencha and i believe the other one was a gyokuro and i kept drinking those tea for many years actually, always a little bit, because for me it was something really precious. And this is the first time where I really started connecting traveling with tea, but not the last one. What happens later on, for example, in 2007, I have been with uh, Alvise, with, uh, he's a very dear friend of mine, we have been uh, cycling to uh, the south of Argentina and Chile, and when I was traveling there, I also bought, uh, I think in Buenos Aires, a um, yerba um, mate, and then a bombilla and a cup for doing uh, mate, and uh, I was uh, doing mate almost every day. It's not tea, but at that time it was tea for me, you know, I connected the traveling with the local culture, the local tea culture. And the same happened in 2011 where I went with another friend, with Nicola. 
I traveled uh, in um, also cycling in the, in Turkey. We made the coast to coast from uh, the Mediterranean Sea to the Black Sea, and there we also ended up uh, drinking uh, black tea in uh, a local uh, tea house uh, in uh, Samsung. It was so you see that. All my travels were connected with tea, but now actually we have gone a little bit too far. We're already in 2011, we have to go a tiny bit back. Let's go back in Berlin. Once I finished to write my master thesis, uh, I wrote my master thesis at the uh, German Aerospace Center in the Institute of Planetary Research. That is pretty much what does it sound? Really cool thing. We were developing uh, instruments for uh, planetary mission to Mars, Mercury and beyond. And when I finished my master thesis, they didn't have a full position to offer me, but they wanted to keep me and I definitely wanted to stay there. So they offered me just a half day contract. Well, you might know, or I tell you right now that I am a very energetic person. I need my day to be full. I couldn't just work 50% of the time and do nothing in the afternoon. So you know what I did? I started being a bike messenger. Being a bike messenger, I was a bike messenger every afternoon for a year, almost a year in Berlin. I was doing 60 to 80 kilometers on my bike, delivering parcel from one place to the other of the city. Why did this is relevant for tea? It is relevant for tea because I learned every single corner of Berlin city, including Friedrichstrasse, which is one of the major and most important road in Berlin. 78, I believe, is the house number. There is Galerie Lafayette, one of the most important and the most famous French grocery store that was also in Berlin. And by delivering parcel there, I discovered that in the underground there was uh, a, um, a, like a, a gourmet grocery department, including a boutique from Mariage Frères. Now, Mariage Frères is uh, probably the most famous gourmet tea shop uh, uh, from France. It was founded in the 19th century and ever since have been uh, delivering very good tea. At that time, actually, I was convinced it was the best in the world. I still remember my first two cans. I bought their best Earl Grey and also uh, Thé Rouge, which uh, is uh, um, actually not the tea, it's rooibos, but at that time I didn't know that it wasn't tea. And uh, it ended up, most probably, I don't remember exactly, but I'm pretty sure it ended up uh, um, buying those also for some Christmas present on that year, it was 2006. And for me it was, you know, there is nothing better than that. It's the, the best in the world. I found the best book, um, the best uh, gourmet uh, tea shop and uh, I was buying all my tea from there. So this was in 2006, uh, but uh, what happens in those years? In those years happen also that I've started doing couch surfing. I don't know if you guys know what is couch surfing. At that time it was a non-profit organization that allows uh, travelers to find hospitality when they travel for free. And it allows people that don't travel to host people that are traveling. And I was doing both. So I remember the first year we started in August 2005 with my flatmate at that time, Andor, and we subscribed to surfing. In the first year, we have hosted about 100 people from all over the world. And guess what? When we were getting new guests and we were having dinner together, after dinner was tea time. So I was preparing tea the tea that most probably I bought at that time from both Rosman and uh, Galerie Lafayette. And I was offering that tea to my customer, uh, sorry, to my guests that were coming uh, visiting. They were just staying for a few days. And this continued for many, many years. So you see that now tea for me was not only related with traveling, I found also good tea sources in Berlin and I was sharing, sharing with others because you know, tea is a social event. I wanted to enjoy it with others. I'm drinking a, a Dan Song, a Milan Shang here. And um, so what happened? Actually, I don't remember if uh, I started uh, searching for uh, tea houses uh, in Berlin, 
but probably it doesn't matter if I don't remember, it's even not worth uh, remembering it. As a matter of fact, in 2009, I started, maybe even 2008, I started traveling to Bern in Switzerland for work. We had uh, to develop a new instrument for uh, a new mission to Mercury, and uh, um, our partner was uh, the University of Bern. So in 2009, towards the end of 2009, I had to travel once there alone, not with my colleagues, and so I thought, you know what, I'm, I find it boring, go to a hotel, let me do uh, couch surfing. And this is the way I met uh, Catherine, and Catherine introduced me to Langaste. Langaste is uh, a beautiful tea house in Bern that was very close to where Catherine was living, and uh, um, I have to tell you, I've seen many tea houses around the world, probably in four different continents. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I've seen tea houses in four different continents. And uh, uh, Lengaste remains for me the best tea house that I've ever seen in the world. So if you end, uh, end up in Switzerland, just visit them. And I spent a lot of time in this tea house. I spent a lot of time reading all their books that they had. They had a huge tea library. I read everything doing uh, tea tasting. They had the beautiful um, option where you can order three different teas and taste them at the same time for comparison. And uh, um, I enjoyed so much. They were preparing everything to perfection. And they have also a gonfucha corner. It was a dependance in a, uh, the next building, but the two buildings were connected. And uh, the, uh, one of the son of, uh, of the owners, Caspar, uh, was running this uh, Chinese speciality tea corner with the gonfucha table where every, the customer were just sitting at the gonfucha table, tasting the tea and then ordering it as it was done in China. Well, this brought me to the next level. Now I forgot Galerie Lafayette, I forgot Her Grey, I forgot The Rouge. For me now this was the best thing in the world. And uh, it really became a hobby. Uh, at that time I was no more uh, doing judo, I left it here before. I was into triathlon uh, quite a lot, but nonetheless I had some, uh, some free time apparently. I started actually uh, 2008, I started also studying Russia, ju uh, Russian just to, to study a new language. So at that time I had my work, I had Russian, I had uh, triathlon and also tea. And in that year, in 2009, I really read a lot. I, bo uh, I bought books, uh, I didn't read only what I found in that uh, tea house. And I started developing um, the urge of going to Yunnan myself. Um, I had a lot of tea in my head, I wanted to touch, I wanted to connect once again traveling with tea. And so uh, I spoke with Catherine, um, that in the meanwhile was my girlfriend, and we decided to go in uh, Yunnan in 2010. And uh, why I picked up China? Because that's the tea that I like the most. Why I picked up Yunnan? Because I knew that the original tea is there, and I wanted to go as close as possible to the origin. I didn't speak a word of Chinese because I was uh, uh, into Russian at that time, but just before leaving I made a few classes just to be able to do, uh, to say the very basics. And, um, and it was a very adventurous journey. We actually uh, traveled to uh, Thailand and then from Thailand we reached the border with Laos and uh, um, Burma, Myanmar. And there we took a boat. I just read somewhere on the web that there was a boat going along the Mekong River into China. So we went there without booking anything, you know, and I, I just, we went there and uh, we found this boat and we went on the boat. In the bo on the boat there was maybe 10 people at most, all Chinese, I think. And uh, we stayed on that boat for nine hours. Yes, it was nine hours all along the Mekong River. Uh, the Mekong River basically um, is between uh, is uh, uh, the line the borderline between uh, uh, Myanmar and Laos so we went all the way up until we reached China and I knew that actually we should have reached uh, Jing Hong in the evening and uh, what happens is that certain point we arrived we went out of the we went out of the boat before going out they measured uh, our temperature and uh, it didn't look like a city, uh, but no one uh, was speaking a single word of English. Um, they, um, there were also a lot of police there. We spent a few hours until they checked our passport. Then they put us in a bus. The bus drove for another two, three hours. And in the middle of the night, we arrived 
in the city actually in Jin Hong. It was the middle of the night and um, I have learned how to ask for direction and asking where is a hotel. So we found a hotel that was awful. That night I remember there were uh, women screaming in the hotel like they were uh, beaten uh, to death but uh, um, we could do nothing you know it was really scary but what can you do um, and um, and then the next day um, we wanted to find a tea market because my plan I actually had a piece of paper in which I had someone that translated for me my mission it was written who I am and that I wanted to do an experience with tea farmers and my intention was to go to a tea market showing this piece of paper and asking directions to um, um, asking how I can uh, um, meet tea farmers and spending time in a tea farm. As a matter of fact, we ended up meeting someone else that uh, spoke English and uh, uh, told that he knew two families on the mountain, uh, uh, two farmers' family, and we can do a trip there and he could ask those family is the one to host us for uh, um, for a few days and yes we ended up staying in uh, uh, at the tea farm it was a hooden house with two stores uh, very rural very dirty as well and uh, um, the kitchen was everything out of wood we were eating with them we were staying with the farmers from sunrise until after sunset uh, we went out to uh, pick up the leaves with them and then in the evening uh, processing we did all the processing with them we couldn't speak a single word of uh, chinese basically they couldn't speak a single word of english and we just understood each other we stayed there some days and um, this was the experience for me this made me understanding that uh, um, I have been drinking tea all my life um, and uh, what I was drinking was not tea actually. So I realized that in the Western world we drink tea but we don't know what is real tea. You know, We know that there is good quality wine and bad quality wine, whiskey, um, beer, coffee, chocolate, but when it's about tea we don't know what is really good quality tea. So I went back to Europe and I had one mission in my head. I wanted to spread out tea culture. So what I did, um, at that time I was still traveling quite a lot because of work. I was going every two months, I was going abroad to presenting something in some conferences. And what I started doing, I started combining my uh, business trip with uh, uh, tea seminars and tea workshops uh, and I did quite a few of them so for example um, I was going to Sweden uh, for, a, um, for a meeting and then uh, if the meeting was uh, towards the end of the week I was staying there also during the weekend I remember once in Sweden uh, I contacted a coffee, uh, a cafe, a bar and they offered me uh, a room and then uh, the day before I was downtown in Stockholm just giving flyers around asking people do you want to come tomorrow there is a tea seminar the next day 30 people came and i was explaining them what is tea and this happened in many different cities in paris multiple times in milan in turin in germany in switzerland um yeah many different places over over several years and uh, um in 2013 I went back uh, to China uh, by myself and since I was still in contact with uh, the guys from uh, Lengaste, from the tea house in Bern, I actually had part of the journey, I joined uh, Kaspar, which is, uh, I said, uh, their uh, son, that was traveling there for sourcing tea. So they are a um, direct sourcing tea house and, uh, and I made some experience with him. At that time, you know, I had nothing, no idea of uh, you know making a tea house or starting a business nothing at all but i realized that if i want to do a tea seminar and tea workshop it would be better if i can buy cheaper tea and uh, um, i realized that uh, i don't have to buy a very large quantity for that so that's how the idea of uh, opening a tea shop an online tea shop happened so the next year um, on the 17th of march of 2014 I um, inaugurated uh, uh, Nanoshan and I opened a company, uh, Nanoshan company. And um, soon after, in April, I went on my first tea sourcing journey to China. Now you have to know that traveling in China is quite demanding. Um, 
because of language barrier at that time i was still studying some russian not really very into russian and into russian but nonetheless uh, I had so much things to do in life and just uh, one hour every week I was going to a Russian course and um, uh, so no time to learn Chinese at all and actually I asked uh, the Kaspar from Lengaste if he would like uh, or if it would be possible to join his tea sourcing uh, trips if he would have been in China for those years he said uh, yes and so uh, I planned I took five weeks off and I went uh, to China uh, one of the first day I met him in Suzhou and I was about to start a tea sourcing journey to buy my first inventory for the online tea shop with uh, him. Well, he met him, me in uh, a coffee uh, a coffee shop in uh, Suzhou uh, with uh, his brother and he told me that uh, uh, he has discussed it with his family and they decided that it's better if uh, I don't join them. Um, now I understand that because they didn't want to disclose all their uh, trade secrets um, but uh, um, yeah I mean it would have been nice to know that uh, before where I was in Europe now I was in China I had already opened a company I had to put products online and before I didn't prepare anything because I thought I will travel just with him so those of you that know me know that I am very uh, stubborn in particular in achieving my goals I had a goal I wanted to open this online shop I cannot go with them I will do it by myself as I told you I had a few years on my shoulder of uh, deepening tea knowledge I knew very well where are the different uh, uh, production region and I had in front of me one of the toughest month of my life i barely sleep i was changing place uh, by flight and by train every two days basically and at the end of the five weeks i have collected more than uh, 50 teas and a lot of tea wear. i think in total about 300 kilos of goods that i shipped to uh, germany and i sent over to francesco francesco is a friend of mine that at that time was supporting me and he was actually storing the tea and the tea wear at home because the company Nanoshan was founded in Berlin but I was already living in Switzerland since 2011 and well that's a different story why I decided to do it in Berlin and not in Switzerland um, to make the story short I wanted to keep it separate from my real life um, I'm still an engineer that was a, what I do full-time Nanoshan had to remain a hobby it doesn't have to interact with um, the rest of my life so I wanted to have far away Francesco was supporting me and when we got order he would pack everything and send it out uh, to the customer and this is what uh, what happened so in uh, um, October or September 2014 we started uh, um, selling tea online and now you have you have to know something you have to know that when I started uh, Nanoshan I was thinking who is gonna do uh, the uh, graphic design for Nanoshan or the corporate design and taking care of all of these and uh, a name uh, came to my mind pretty much uh, straightforward and is Michaela. Michaela was uh, a good friend of mine at that time and uh, um, I really like uh, uh, still today a lot uh, uh, the art that she does. She's an artist, she's a graphic designer and uh, um, I really suggest go ahead, I will put a link in the description below, go ahead and check her website. She does really beautiful work and uh, I knew Michaela from years before when she was living in Berlin and I thought let's speak to her and let's see if she wants to do the corporate design for Nanoshan and designing the whole website well that was happened so the Nanoshan website as you see today was actually uh, drawn by Michaela and also uh, actually in the future then the tea house and you know our logo the guy one was made by Michaela and so on so um, that's when Michaela actually came into Nanoshan and just receiving these um, she was a freelancer so you know I just um, as a freelancer she was doing this uh, this work but uh, I didn't have in mind at all to start and to open a tea house I just wanted this tea shop having a, a reason why I can buy tea in China and in larger quantities and was continuing doing all my workshop around uh, Europe give me a second So what happened is that um, soon after, actually I'm saying we are at the end of 2014, <clears throat> this idea of opening a tea house 
was somewhat in my head. And, uh, and what I did, I say, okay, if I open a tea house, it have to be in Berlin. I don't want it close to me for the same reason that I told you before. So I thought, what if I ask Michaela, she, since she was living in Berlin, if she wants to go back to Berlin and uh, uh, run uh, uh, the tea house? But I didn't know to which extent she was into tea and uh, she liked all this war. So I thought, I won't tell her anything yet. And um, I simply uh, asked Michaela if she would like to go uh, to China and do some uh, tea ware sourcing because she has uh, a very good taste and uh, she helped us in the past to select tea ware. And uh, if she would go there and experience China herself, I will know at the end of this journey if she's really in love with tea or not. So it was January when she was then, uh, 3rd January 2015. And when uh, she came back, uh, we understood that, uh, yeah, I had the feeling she's something that she would like to do. So I spoke to her, um, she spoke to um, her boyfriend and uh, they decided to uh, move to Berlin, uh, back to Berlin and uh, um, run in the tea house. And this is what happened. So uh, it took to us another half a year to do all the planning, the architecture. Michela did also their, basically the complete design of the tea house uh, and um, you know everything from the gonfucha table, the way the, um, the tea jars were disposed, uh, uh, displayed on the, on the wall. Uh, all the design basically was made by her. Uh, I think the only thing that I did, I made the design of the tables. Uh, that's something I did myself. And of course we had a lot of exchange but uh, yeah it was her contribution and uh, uh well it's uh, this is the idea right so we wanted to open this tea house so when i went back to china in april i, I was going to china every year uh, multiple times so i went back in april 2015 i was there for sourcing tea for the tea house the tea online tea shop was just a small thing but if i have to run a real uh, tea house it's a different thing so besides doing all my business uh, plan and all you know calculation can i effort it can i not effort it you know, I'm, I'm not coming from a rich family when i started working i had zero euro on my bank account i didn't want to invest uh, any money of others it have to come all all from me, I didn't want any investor, so I really had to find out if it's something that I can afford. At the end, it was a hobby. I had to make sure it won't be too expensive. And uh, yeah, and then I went to China, and when I was in China, a German guy wrote me because he was reading uh, our blog, and he realized in a picture he saw someone that he knew, someone in China. So it happened that on the flight back, I flew back to Berlin, and I met this guy because he had a tea house at that time in Berlin. Uh, his name is Benjamin, uh, which is today a very good friend of mine. And uh, we realized that actually we knew the same person because I was buying Taiwan Oolong from the only shop in China that can import uh, uh, tea from Atong, which is uh, a famous uh, Taiwan uh, tea master. And Benjamin, who lived in China for 15 years, went also to Taiwan to learn uh, processing tea. And that is where he met uh, uh, the guy that was running this shop in China. A bit confusing story maybe, but to make the story short, I met Benjamin when I went back and I realized that Benjamin actually wanted to close his tea house. Another, another story, the reason why. And uh, he said to me, uh, do you want to take over the space? since we wanted to open a tea house in Berlin, was the better uh, option. So that's uh, what we decided with Michaela. We will open uh, in, the, in this space. It turned out that we moved elsewhere. Uh, we moved to, a, for, for reason, you know, that we couldn't foresee, we just couldn't uh, rent uh, that place or we didn't want to rent that place. And we rented a place in a very quiet courtyard, uh, very central in Berlin. And um, yeah, and this is how uh, we started Nanoshan in uh, uh, November 7th, 2015. On my birthday, we had uh, the opening, the vernissage of the tea house. Michela uh, ran uh, the tea house for uh, quite some time. In 2016, I was still living in Switzerland. I also started uh, a meetup. Uh, meetup is a website where you can organize uh, meetups with other. So I had this meetup group that is still existing. We have more than 500 subscribers in Switzerland. And from time to time, I was organizing tea tasting at my place. And one of these tea tasting, 
um, Caroline joined and also Matthias uh, that uh, Matthias knew Nanoshan because uh, he was on a business trip in Berlin and visited actually uh, the tea house even when I was there visiting so we met in Berlin first in 2015 and then we met again uh, uh, in Switzerland because I was living near Zurich and Matthias was living in Zurich and in one of these meetups also Caroline came because she was interested in tea um, she just read about it on the meetup and then we traveled together and here we are 2020 we are still together so um, the as a matter of fact, Michaela, to go back to the tea house, ran uh, the tea house until uh, the end of 2017, so for about uh, two years. And uh, um, it didn't uh, unfortunately run uh, well, so at the beginning everything was great, but then it's a different, it's a long story actually, but um, we had different interests in a way. Like for me, Nanoshan was a hobby, I was living off something else. Michaela had to live out of uh, uh, Nanoshan. I was a very demanding as always, um, as I told you, I'm very stubborn and I'm also very demanding when people have to work with me, which is not good, I know, but you know, that's the way I am and trying to get in better. And towards the end, there were friction between us, um, just this thing, I think, thinking back of it, this thing that for me was just a hobby and Michaela had to lead out of it. I was not in Berlin and she was in Berlin, didn't work it out well. In fact, Michele and I, uh, fortunately, are no more friends, we don't speak anymore to each other. And uh, at the end of 2017, um, Claudia became the new uh, team manager. So Michele went out of the company and uh, I was running in the company alone and uh, we hired Claudia. Claudia uh, saved me because uh, she came with a lot of tea knowledge, with a huge tea passion with uh, um, a lot of experience also in working in tea houses and in sale and she ran uh, the tea house for a whole year. Um, at the end of that year, so it was um, the end of 2018, um, it was when I already knew I will move to the US. For some reason also the um, co-working with Claudia didn't uh, run uh, very well, especially in the second part of the year. Uh, a lot of friction, probably me uh, asking too much. Uh, I have to say that while Claudia had much more experience in sale um, and uh, in working in tea house than Michaela had, and this helped me a lot of not having to care about all these sales things. With Michaela, I had a better understanding about uh, um, art. So whatever Michaela came up with, art, uh, interior design and everything. I love that. Uh, while with Claudia we were on two different wavelengths. Uh, she had a different taste than I and this was also a reason for friction between us. So whatever, at the end of 2018, anyway I decided to close the tea house because I was me moving to uh, the US for staying here for some years and uh, if it's hard to manage a tea house in Berlin, living in Switzerland and having a full-time job in Switzerland, think about being overseas. Uh, where here I'm also taking new responsibility with my first job as an engineer and was just too much. You know, you have to know where, uh, where something gets too much and um, people asking me, how can you not get a burnout? You have a full-time job and you do uh, sport and you do uh, nano shan 20, 30, 40 hours a week. How can you do that for uh, five, six years now? Well, I can because if I sleep enough uh, during the day, I have a lot of energy. I can have every week 60, 70 hours working with without break. Um, but you have to know your limits. And uh, I knew I cannot continue um, doing that if I go to the US. So I closed the tea house and, uh, and now I was without a tea house with an online shop that was growing and uh, with uh, the feeling that I didn't want to run this alone because for me tea was still uh, something that I wanted to do with friends. But I started asking myself questions. Um, I was asking myself, you know, with Michaela didn't run well, with Claudia didn't run so good. So, you know, um, just statistically speaking, something was wrong with me because it cannot be that it's because of others if it's always me, you know. Uh, so I thought um, I have to do something, I have to take care about the people I choose to work with. I have to be sure that we get along together. So I decided 
there are a few criteria I want to apply. Those people that will be partners of Nanoshan have to be friends, have to have a true passion for tea. They, they also have to bring <clears throat> different knowledge. They, they don't have to be engineers. They have to bring other knowledge into the company. And also they don't have to do it for money. So uh, Claudia for her was her job. Uh, Michaela had also to live out of it. Uh, for me, not, it's just a hobby. I want to keep it like that. So I wanted just people that also don't have this pressure. Yeah, this financial pressure. And so I proposed it to a few friends and um, some of them uh, tried it out. Then uh, um, for a friend, it was uh, too much, uh, too much to do. I understand having two jobs at the same time. For another one it was contradicting because uh, uh, she's uh, a programmer. She was programming our website and then she was doing it for free. So um, because she was part of the business, so she also decided to step back. Uh, she's still our designer for the website and our programmer, but uh, she does that as a freelancer. And Matthias remains. So it has been almost two years now and Matthias has been a partner. And uh, I'm happy that everything is running well and we are still good friends. We work well together and we are trying to involve always also uh, someone uh, else in it uh, that uh, you might already be aware of. But now we start moving into present rather than history. And at this point, you know how I actually made all my way from uh, drinking tea bags to drinking gonfucha tea. If you're still there, it means that uh, you have enjoyed uh, all this history. I hope now you will have also different feeling when you watch uh, the videos. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up. It's very important for us. And if you are not among those thousand people that have subscribed our channel, go ahead and subscribe it. Thank you very much. Uh, keep on brewing tea and I will see you in the next videos. Bye bye.